I used to hate doing SEO for fashion brands. Now it's one of my favorite niches. And the reason is actually very simple. It used to be extremely boring and difficult, and now it's extremely easy. I'm gonna break down what's changed in the last 12 months for fashion SEO and why it's easier than ever to grow a niche fashion brand with SEO. I'm even gonna build a strategy for a fashion brand later in this video using ChatGPT and SEMrush. So make sure to stick around for that. So first let's get into how it actually used to work for fashion-based SEO. So let's start with old fashioned SEO. Run your technical audit, fix the core issues, optimize existing collections, optimize product pages, publish four to six supporting blogs per month, mostly top of funnel, build internal links from blogs to money pages, and power up the whole system with um, backlinks to various pages, right? Now, of course, there's more to this. There's a little bit more nuance. LinkedIn and Fiverr SEOs will tell you that you need to run a 10,000 page technical audit before you build any content or build any links or whatever. That's just not true. Okay. This is the core of the strategy. Sure. There's things in between, but this is it at its simplest principle. Okay. Now new fashion SEO, run technical audit, fix the core issues, optimize existing collections, build more collections and optimize these two build internal links between collections, power up the whole system with backlinks to the homepage and key collect pages. That's it. Okay. One last step, but a hell of a lot simpler to execute. And I'm going to show you why. Now, why did I actually used to hate fashion SEO? Because I never really used to understand the purpose or the point of actually writing blog content for fashion brands. I hated seeing agencies or freelancers churn out blogs titled stupid things like what is a hoodie, how to wear a hoodie, how to style a hoodie. Extremely dumb article to waste a couple hours on and a couple hundred dollars of client budget on. Everyone knows what a hoodie is. You don't need to explain it to them and no one is actually searching for those things. I said, I actually said no to fashion brands for a while in my agency because like, I actually thought this is how the playbook worked, right? Build the collections, publish top on blog content, build your links, things will work out. I was dumb. I was naive. That was stupid. I actually probably could have been working with a lot more fashion brands right now and getting a lot better results had I just arrived at this next conclusion much sooner. About a year ago, well, always changing, but about a year ago, SEO changed pretty substantially. Blog content really lost kind of a lot of its magic almost overnight. Collection pages have kind of always been the money makers in e-commerce SEO, but they actually became even more popular and even more effective. So instead of writing four worthless blogs every single month about pieces of clothing like hoodies that everyone actually already understands, I just get to create, optimize, and then rank new collection pages to help fashion brands sell more of their products. So here's just one example of how I've done this for a brand that we're already working with very recently. I created a new Pilates collection, built out the copy, added the products to it, hit publish on it, and pretty much overnight, it ended up on page one. Now, the brand had a decently strong domain reputation. However, this collection was something they were missing entirely. Now, it is one of their top three organic landing pages, and it's driving hundreds or tens of thousands of dollars every single month in organic revenue that they weren't actually getting before because they weren't actually targeting anything around Pilates, right? So this is just like one easy thing. This is like in a month of data, like the first month data. 270 clicks, 145 clicks, 141 clicks, and all of these, these very different searches around Pilates, right? And the way to do this is actually pretty simple. So take the brand in the last example. They had already created collections for all of their major product types, leggings, sports bras, hoodies, long sleeves, things like that, okay? Now I simply looked at these collections, the same collections, and I asked myself, how else could these products be worn? Okay. I wasn't thinking about blogs. I already said, we don't need to define what leggings are or sports bras or anything like that are right. Very self-explanatory to anyone on earth. So instead, I just, like I said, looked at those collections and I asked myself, how could I reframe them? So I actually used ChatGPT and it came up with Pilates, hiking, running, and tons of other ideas. So then what we did is we created a collection. We spun up copy for Pilates clothing, hiking clothes, running clothes, and then subcategories of each. Pilates tops, Pilates bottoms, Pilates sets, hiking tops, hiking leggings, hiking sports bras, so on and so forth. And now the brand is crushing organic search. Since we started with them, organic search revenue is already up 25% to 126,000 and growing. Um, number of new users up 54%, number of clicks up 70%, number of sessions up 22%, and number of impressions up 49%, right? Now, all of this is not the result of those new collections, right? We definitely made some improvements on their existing collections, which are also growing quite a bit, but these new collections definitely gave us a lot more new queries to go target, which contributed to such the substantial increase in all of the new clicks, all of the new impressions and all that good stuff. So let's take this same methodology, same theory and apply it to another fashion brand. All right. 
So I asked ChatGPT to create a fashion brand idea for me. I told him to give me five unique ideas for the core of each fashion brand, including what kind of products I'm selling and who I'd sell them to. Okay. So it came up with names, it came up with the core idea, and it came up with kind of the, the flagship products really for each brand, right? So we've got Nomad Layer, which is like modular fashion with digital nomads. Could be a good one, honestly. Um, Rebel Heritage, reimagining classic heritage workwear with punk grunge energy would be cool to wear. I don't know if it's a great fit for SEO. Um, I will say not every fashion brand is a good fit for SEO before I get any further. If you just sell very generic fashion, like you just say you sell luxury goods, you're not going to be good at SEO simply for the fact that your clothes need kind of a unique angle, a unique edge, a unique niche kind of to, to get into. Okay. Um, all of these, for example, like minus the real heritage one kind of have that, um, so studio biophilic high fashion, skipping that one, um, uniform recode, hyper minimalist, general neutral uniforms, da daily life, hmm. small market probably wouldn't do it. Um, play state at leisure, the channels, childhood joy and retro games. Okay. Um, Okay, this one actually sounds cool. So I'm going to take this one. So let's go with PlayState. I'm just going to play with ChatGPT on this um, and kind of converse with it and see what kind of keywords we can come up with and then turn that into search volume and SEMrush. And that'll kind of be the SEO play. Okay. So uh, let me just pause this video and type out a prompt and then we'll go from there. All right. So I said I like PlayState. That's the brand I want to focus on. And that's what I want to build. I want to build an e commerce SEO strategy for it. And I want to do so by maximizing the amount of category pages. I built to target different customers searching for the same products. For example, at the end of the day, someone searching for a red windbreaker and a lightweight windbreaker still want a windbreaker, regardless of color or feature. So for example, I'd target every color windbreakers keyword as well as every feature windbreakers keyword. Let's start there and just focus on the windbreakers, right? They mentioned um, terry cloth sets, nostalgic logos. I'm just going to focus on the windbreakers for right now, okay? So we've got red windbreakers, blue, pretty much every color you go literally through this with every single color of the rainbow, as long as it was your brand and you had the capacity to, of course, fulfill that color, right? Now, feature-based, lightweight, packable, waterproof, breathable line, cool, like that. Cropped, oversized, retro, vintage style, color block, 90s fitted, great. Uh, men's, women's, unisex, all pretty straightforward. I'm assuming I sold to all these ages. If it was just men's or just women's, for example, you wouldn't need these. Um, activity specific, running, hiking, travel, cycling, festival, all good ones, kind of off the Pilates angle that I just, that I opened this video with. Uh, material construction, nylon, recycled fabric, polyester, fleece line. Again, if it was like, if I only had one fabric for the windbreaker, I wouldn't need these, but let's say I had 30 windbreakers, maybe they're all different uh, materials. Great. Then I could do that. Okay. So, uh, all right. It's going to ask me to do this. Yeah. It's going to ask me a bunch of stuff. I don't care about that. I just wanted to list every single keyword. So I just wanted to list all the keywords separated by comma, so I can just plug it into SEMrush very quickly, okay? Okay, it's going to be annoying. Get rid of the headings. Just list keywords. I just want to copy this once, so I'm just not putting up that. Perfect. Okay, so now let's go to SEMrush, and I'm just going to plug all of these in. We have 38 keywords starting right now. If we, t if we were to take all of them, okay, we have 4,000 searches per month, okay? Now, if we just did men's windbreaker, for example, we'd only have 1,900. However, we can rank for all these a lot easier because you see the competition is weak as hell. So we've now effectively doubled our search volume if we just had men's windbreakers, and we've picked up a lot more categories to do with it, okay? So good start. Now, let's go a little bit back up and see what else we can do um, beyond the windbreakers, okay? So... Nostalgic logos, collaborative drops. Okay, so like if I did like collaborative drops, like classic gaming IP or toy brands, I could do like anime or I could do, yeah, vintage games, vintage movies. So let's take a look into that. Okay, so now I want to dive into just like the other type, like the clothing itself, okay? Um, Instead of just like windbreakers, because that's like a very narrow category to get into. And honestly, if you were to start that e-commerce brand, I don't think you'd be very happy because while windbreakers are cool, the market is exceptionally small. So you would need to expand beyond that if you wanted to go to like seven or eight figures. Now, let's, I, let's, I said like, like hypothetically, let's, what if we did hoodies and shirts? Um, 
for example, what could be included in like the gaming IP, um, anime, famous movies, slash movie categories, games, comics, things like that. Give me every keyword, every keyword you can think of. Okay. Now it's got all this very basic stuff. These are like super generic keywords. It's going to be hard to rank for. And honestly, you're probably not going to convert well if you're selling like anime or gaming or comic related stuff. No offense to you. Just the average person searching for a long sleeve shirt doesn't want an anime logo or icon on it. Simple as that. Okay. Um, so now we have like themes and category keywords. So it's got anime, it's got nostalgic, it's got PlayStation, Xbox, it's got Mario Brothers, probably got Nintendo in here, Nintendo in here. It's probably got, yeah, it's got a lot of famous movies, a lot of famous uh, franchises, series, all that good stuff. So let's just like take these as an example. Okay. So we're at 4,000 search volume right now. Just remember that for a second. I'm going to add the, all these other keywords here and put it up top and we're at 30,000. So we haven't even gone into like the other product categories, which we started with, which were like, what were they? Um, retro and bigger school. I didn't, I didn't even think I plug in retro hoodies, but that would be a good one to do. Terry cloth sets could do that. Nostalgic logos, fine. Um, so starting from here, like you've got 34,000 searches a month to go compete for. And honestly, the competition on these is like pretty weak for sure. Like I imagine Disney is going to own the right Disney or Marvel or whoever DC is going to own the rights to a few of these, but a lot of them won't. Um, and the competition can be pretty weak as a result of it. So you can go spin up a brand, create categories for each of these pages, collections, whatever, add the copy that explains the collection, you know, add the products, you start building links, you start building, inter you start building backlinks to the site, internal links between the collections, and you're pretty much good to go. 